Despite pandemic headwinds, these are the headlines. Startups are thriving, venture capitalists are booming, with global venture funding exceeding the dot-com era at 300 billion last year. That growth came as industries disrupted by the pandemic from work, healthcare, education, finance, shopping and entertainment shifted dramatically to online services, which further created a boom for a strong IPO and M&A market. The bottom line, the global entrepreneurial revolution is here. And who better to unpack this than my next guest, renowned American investor, advisor and author Christopher Schroeder, who has seen this firsthand in some of the most unexpected places. Chris is the co-founder of Next Billion Ventures, focused on the next billion digital consumers across global emerging markets, and is also a network partner for Village Global, an early VC fund backed by, among others, Bill Gates, Sarah Blakely, and Jeff Bezos. He sits on the investment committees of Wanda Capital and Saudi Telecom Ventures, and that, my friends, is just the tip of the iceberg. Chris started out in politics with the George W. Bush presidential campaign before becoming the CEO of the Washington Post Newsweek Interactive. He then co-founded Health Central, backed by the likes of Sequoia, and Carwell before it was acquired in 2012. In 2013, Chris published Startup Rising, the entrepreneurial revolution remaking the Middle East with a forward by Mark Andreessen. Today, we unpack the rise of startup through this crisis, solving for some of the toughest problems. You don't want to miss this. Even in Singapore, there was a lot of initial government investment into VC firms, into then startup entrepreneurship and, and so on and so forth. And my question to you then, and I know you've thought about this a little bit as well, is what is the role of government in entrepreneurship? And you brought up two key names that I also want to get your thought thoughts on, which is uh, Google and Facebook and the role of big tech and government, which is hot today. What, what are your thoughts here? Well, okay. I mean, you know, there's a kind of a, if not a myth, a conventional wisdom that comes out of American entrepreneurs in particular. And I think there's been a huge element of this in the Valley for 20 years, which is the best thing the government can do is kind of get out of the way, let innovation do what it wants to do. And mm -hmm. and I have a leaning towards that in many ways. Having said that, the irony is of anyone who understands the history of Silicon Valley, the government played a lot of role in unleashing that innovation 50 years ago uh, and going forward from funding and DARPA and R&D and other things like that. Right. But that doesn't mean that they're wrong. I mean, at the end of the day, the ability to have policy whose focus is to allow talent to succeed and to unleash with the least amount of friction the ideas that she or he has to develop, I think is sort of the foundational mark of how, um, at the end of the day, policymakers can be thinking about this. Are you making an entrepreneur's life better, easier, faster, cheaper, more beautiful, more efficient? Are you allowing investment money to be able to flow fairly easily? And of course, investors are able to get money out of the circumstances. I mean, there's some very basic things that in this amazing global world, that if certain governments and if certain countries don't get it right, capital and talent will simply go somewhere else. And then you have a cycle of this sort of brain drain and capital drain whose future is completely easy to predict. And so I do believe that there's a role of government. I do believe we have examples in many parts of the world that often make us in America uncomfortable where the government has been constructed. I think there are people who believe in those countries you cannot have innovation because you cannot have centrally planned innovation. But I think people who are thinking that way are, have a view of central planned economies from maybe 20 or 30 years ago. They're not thinking about how there's been more of an ability to allow and unleash talent on its own sake. I still think there are many limitations and there are many problems that these countries also have to stare at and rethink. Often they talk a better game than they act, uh, but it's a complicated world. It doesn't lend itself to one simple answer. And uh, your observation you know, on Facebook and what have you, you know, it has been very fun uh, to pick on big tech in these days. I come at it at a little bit of a different lens. I mean, I think companies make major mistakes and I think they should be held accountable. And I think one of the great things, particularly about companies in America, is that you have an opportunity to self-correct or you'll pay a price in the market for not doing it. I think at the same time, we shouldn't un underestimate the power of what big tech has unleashed around the world. And I have to tell you, you know, I've spent some time recently really focusing on India and I've mm. seen this in Latin America and Brazil. I mean, what's happened? is a revolution for small right. businesses and individuals, not only to connect in the way that you and I do commonly, but to literally do transactions, to build business, to reach customers. I mean, the only problem I think with WhatsApp is I don't think they understand how their tools are actually being used in rising markets. If they did, they would adjust the product to make it easier for them because most of the women and men are jerry-rigging the product to make it work, but they're making it work by the millions and they're reaching right. customers and transacting things by the millions. You can't simply look at big tech and say they're all bad when tools like this have unleashed this level of potential and multiplier outcome in so many places in the world. 
Right. But what, what is the balance here, though? I mean, you know, sure, uh, I, I think you know, there's definitely good that has come of tech. And I think we have to be believers in tech. Uh, but Facebook, Google, Amazon uh, have grown to become monopolies in many ways. And and with even the political climate, I think there's a lot of discussion on what what is the limit and how how do markets really self-correct when the monopoly is so so um, intense? I think it's an incredibly important question, and I've thought about it a lot in different contexts. I was in China a year and three months ago, and I sort of came away from these amazing meetings with Tencent and uh, Alibaba and others and thinking to myself, well, there's just no way anyone can compete with these juggernauts. Like, they are so large, they have so much capital, they have so much talent, they have so much data, they can simply launch products with incredible efficacy, and they could do it for free. Having said that, TikTok rose. Having said that, said that Pinduoduo, completely rose be doing something very innovative and different in the way that they did in e-commerce and what audiences they went at. So, um, you know, innovation is a very kind of sticky, complicated thing where even in light of big juggernauts, the great companies have come in and disrupted them. Having said that, I do have some worry now, not so much about the traditional sense of antitrust, which is our consumers being hurt by pricing, because the fact of the matter is most of these platforms are incredibly price efficient and many of them are even free. And we have to keep in mind that Amazon is a juggernaut, but e-commerce still only represents about 16% of all retail sales in the United States. It's like 2% in most of the other places of the world. So you need to rethink what that definition is. What public good are you trying to get at? And the string that I will continue to pull on is the idea that the juggernauts may suck out the ability of innovation to rise. That to me is problematic. But on the other hand, I don't think I've got a lot of data proving it. I think I still see amazing companies that are innovating. They often get acquired by some of these larger companies. And I've never been more bullish on the era of innovation that we're living in right now.